Hello everybody, thank you very much for joining me. I'm very thrilled to welcome you here in my workshop and school here in uh, Norwich in the United Kingdom. Today, I'm gonna be doing a little demo and uh, teaching you a little bit about how you can make your own slot punch to start making bottle openers and other uh, small decorative knickknacks that you can start selling at, uh, at shows and start giving to people as Christmas presents. So, without further ado, let's start hitting some steel and uh, try not to burn ourselves too much. Hello everybody. So, the steel we're going to be using is EN24, that's what we call it here in the UK. In the US we'd call it 4340, and in fact, coil springs from cars are perfect. That's 5160, or here in the UK, EN47. So holding my steel at a steep angle and bisecting the angle on the end of the bar with half on, half off hammer blows, we will forge a very pointy taper. We're not going to go down to a point, however, I'm just talking about the angle. And when we bring it down to the finished dimension, I will lower the angle, and by holding it where the forging starts and stops on the anvil, we'll be able to extend our taper back and get a longer taper. So you'll see this will create two other angles to hit. So I'll either raise my angle to hit that point that I just pointed at, or lower it to hit this point here. So obviously we're working on minimizing surface area contact with the anvil and the hammer. This means less heat being lost to the anvil via conduction and more PSI exerted into the steel, meaning more movement and less heat needing to be taken and a faster time at the anvil. So we'll then planish off the surfaces when we get it fairly neat after having focused on making sure to reduce the surface area contact here, it doesn't matter. And you'll see that the tip we're going for is going to be about 12 to 14 millimeters square. So that is about half inch to 9 sixteenths millimeters square. It's worth noting that, of course, when we're wanting to reduce material, the only way we can reduce our section is by working either square or hexagon. To get it to a round, we have to take it octagon or to 12 sides if we're working square or if we're working hexagon. So, as you can see here, I'm taking it to octagon. So I'm hitting these high corners and making sure that we have even eight sides throughout the entire length of the taper. A problem that a lot of folks will do with their round tapers is that they'll make their square taper fine. However, when they get to their octagon taper, they only take the corners off before trying to round it. That is a problem. What we want to do is we want to go from a nice clean square taper to a nice clean octagon taper. That means eight even sides and then to a nice clean 16 sided taper and then, as you can see, what we're doing here is we're simply rolling it around and letting our hammer move up the steel gently and chasing the neat round finish all the way around. In the words of Brian Brazil, if you want it perfect, make it perfect. On a tool like this, we want it pretty neat, basically, because the cleaner that taper is, the less grinding we have to do at the end of forging the tool. So after having heated it back up again, I'm going to flatten the taper on two sides. This is going to mean that we are going to have this slot punch profile with the rounded sides. This means that we don't have to do much grinding, if any, on the sides, as little as we can do. And it also means that we have these nice round sides, so when we're making other tools where the punch is going to get deeper in the material, this is very helpful and it saves grinding it. And so, of course, I'm only going to work on the flats and I will not hit the sides of the material with my hammer because otherwise it's going to create ugly flat spots in the round and it's going to make for more grinding and it's actually going to cup that high rectangle and mean that we either have to forge it out and it's become a little bit weak or we have to grind it out. So obviously we want it nice and neat and centred, as neat and centred as you can get it with your hammer and then we can call it that for the working end. So here I'm just going to sign it and then we're going to move on to cutting off the tool. So to cut off our material, we're going to be using a Brown Brazil Hot Cut Hardy. So the two main features of this, and as to why it's the best hot cut available, is that it has the curved, very thin blade, meaning for very little surface area contact and very little resistance with the steel when we're cutting through it, and it has that tapered shank that locks into the hardy hole, and no, it does not damage the hardy hole. To prove that, this is a medium carbon alloy steel hot cut hardy in a mild steel anvil, and I have cut a lot of steel on this mild steel anvil, and obviously mild steel being softer than your conventional anvil, it hasn't moved. It's not going to move. The hot cut hardy is not going to damage your anvil. 
So obviously starting slowly around the cut and letting this cut get deeper and deeper without overlapping the cuts and cutting threads will get close to the halfway point. Obviously at the halfway point, it's gonna to wanna to fracture and break off and fly across the workshop and start a fire. So if we can, it's better to break it off in a set of tongs. Now this step here is optional. You can either just cut it off and leave it as is, or you can forge this little taper on the working end. I forged it hexagon and it all just helps with the aesthetics in my view. I don't actually think it helps with stopping the mushrooming at any rate. In fact, I think that it just means that it's going to mushroom more proportionally to the uh, material size at the end of that paper. For aesthetics, however, it breaks up the look of the tool, makes it look a little bit neater. So then, after having let it cool down and given it a wire wheel, I'll take off that nub on the striking end and round it off a little bit so it's a nice surface to strike on. And then, of course, we'll put a flat on the end that is our punch. Moving on to an 120 grit belt, Quickly going to grind that little radius on the slack belt on the striking end. We can begin forging the geometry and the grind of the working end. So this grind, in fact, is about a 90 degree grind. We're not trying to chisel our way through. We still want to be able to punch a plug. But the benefit of this grind is we're able to position it in our steel before it creates a mark that is uh, unmovable, like with a flat punch also means it's going to be able to sink through the steel a little bit faster. So the reason I have a magnet here is because the temperature at which the steel changes state and becomes hardenable is very close to the temperature at which it loses its magnetism. So heating up the working end, checking it for non-magnetic, and then cooling off half of the heat means that we can harden the tip and then we can draw temper colours in the same heat. So I scratch it with the, uh, with the grinding disc and I have a look at the scratch marks and I want to see the temper colors run. So the temper colors are going to start running like this in this order. They're going to start running as a purple, then a blue, then a light blue, then a dark straw, and then a light straw. On the tip, we want a light straw. This is going to be about 220 degrees Celsius. This is uh, about perfect for a tool like this. It means that we can lay out cold on, uh, on cold mild steel and... Uh, that's what we kind of want in a tool like this, so we can, you know, lay all our holes out in a, on a piece of work and make it all nice and neat before heating up a piece of steel. So again, we'll let those temper colours run a few times, more times the better. This also means that when we let the tool air cool, there isn't any more residual heat left in the bar. This is just vegetable oil I'm cooling in. This is not a high-tech hardening procedure. We are requiring very little out of the steel for a blacksmith's operation, just enough hardness for it to work well. For more detailed hardening specs, you can find them for your particular steel online. So obviously there's the grind of the end of the slot punch. You can see it's about a 90 degree grind and it has those edges taken off. That's about it, folks. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe. And if you want to head over to www.blacksmithingtools.co.uk, I would love to meet you there. Bye-bye.